Once again, you are all welcome to In Christ Realities. I'm your regular presenter, Tichan Bomju, the Apostolic Overseer of In Christ Ministries here in Boya. We are excited to come your way today with a knowledge that will be impactful, a knowledge that is going to change the dimensions of reasoning. So we thank all of you. Today we'll be talking about breaking the fallow ground. Breaking the fallow ground. Sorry, the fallow ground. Breaking the fallow ground. Remember to send in your messages. Use the WhatsApp. Use your normal SMS. Those who are using WhatsApp, it's like the internet is not good. So we want you to send your half messages. You better send them quickly so that as the network is disturbing, you will not be of a hindrance. So for send in your reactions, your reactions. So today we'll be talking about breaking uh, fallow grounds, breaking fallow grounds. You know, one of the great things, uh, one of the things that Christians have said, and at times we see reason with them, not as a reason for failure, is because many claim that God does not answer prayers. God does not answer prayers. There are many people who can say, no, God does not answer prayers. The life is... Uh, they, they have a way of saying it. The bill of life just goes, goes on. Whatever thing comes our way, it comes our way, and we take it like that. Many people don't know how they can actually program their life, they can fashion their life, and live the way it's supposed to be according to the scripture. So the question is, if you pray and God does not answer, what happens? Why is it that God does not answer your prayer? Because that testimony can be for you and not for another person. Another person will tell you God answers. Another person will say God does not answer. So it depends on you. So today we want to break the fallow ground. Fallow ground. Fallow ground. That's why we are here today. We are still in that, in, in that uh, uh, we are still trying to explain in line with prayer. We have been talking for a very long time about prayer. This is still in line with prayer. We are still talking about prayer. When we pray, God hears. When we pray, He answers. So, breaking fallow grounds. I want us to quickly open to Scripture. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3. And four, and then Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. That is where we'll be talking from this evening. That is where we'll be talking from this evening. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Breaking fallow grounds. For thus said the Lord God, to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord and take away the four skins of your, of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because the evil, because of the evil of your doings. I will just quickly go to Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. I hope you are there with your Bible and your notebook with your pen to make sure you judge some things that will be helpful to you. It is in my desire Verse 12, so to yourselves, sorry, so to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. These are the two verses in the scripture that talk about breaking fallow ground. Breaking fallow ground. Breaking fallow ground. <laughs> when we talk about fallow ground, what do we mean? In the physical, those of us who have done geography in school, those of us who 
have done agriculture, you will know about following, the following system. So the following system is all about an uncultivated uh, piece of land. Or a piece of land that has been cultivated and then for some time allowed to follow, allowed to regain back its fertility. Because it has been built out, after using it for a number of years, the place has actually worn out, so you keep it to follow. You keep it to regain its fertility. But the Bible tells us very clearly here that, that you that you break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. Break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns. So it is always taken for granted that because you have lived a piece of land for a number of years, four, five, six, seven years, for you to follow, you have become fatal, then you can just go and you cultivate. No. When you leave it to follow, when it's the time to cultivate, you need to do a lot of hard work on it. It requires hard work. Because trees may have grown in, on it. There may, they may be tons on it. There may be rocks. There may, there may be storms. That need to be pulled out. So we talk about fallow ground. The Bible talks about the fallow ground. We talk about on an unplowed land, a land that has not been tilled, a land that needs work before it can be cultivated. And that's why it says here that break up your fallow ground and sow not among tons. Because you can have a fallow ground, you just go into it and you want to just sow. When you sow, it won't do well. Why? Because over the years, the place has become stiff. The ground has become hardened. You need to work on it first before planting. For if you fail to work on it, therefore when you plant, the crops will not do well. Same in the spiritual realm. The fallow ground is your heart. Maybe there are some dimensions in your heart that over the years you have not worked on. And so far as you have not worked on it, there is no way the word of God will prevail in your life. There is no way the word of God will prevail in your life. Because you need to work on your heart. You need to soften your heart. You need to do a lot of things so that your heart can become a fertile ground for the word of God. And then when you pray, you will have results. So, to be a Christian requires a hard work. A hard work in your heart. A hard work in your spirit. A hard work in your mind. For if your mind is not stable in the word of God, if your heart has not become a fatal ground for the word of God, then whatever thing that you put on it will not prosper. And when it doesn't prosper, God is not the one to take the blame. You are the one to blame yourself for having an uncultivated, untilled heart. So when we talk in terms of prayer, it is not everybody who will pray and God hears. Even though the Bible says God will hear our desires, but we need to work on ourselves. We need to work on our hearts. That's what the Bible says here, therefore, don't say the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground. And so not among tongues. One of the things I want to say this evening is that for your heart to be productive, for your heart to be fertile, there are things that you must do concerning yourself, concerning your prayer life, concerning your Bible study life that will require that when you put the word of God into it, when you receive the word of God, it will become productive. If we have not worked on our heart, if we have not worked on our mind, therefore, the word of God will not be productive. The ground will not be fatal for the word of God to be productive in it. 
God will not be able to walk through us. Because at the end of the day, what we will produce, we will produce what we call unbelief. Unbelief. Not to believe. A Christian is called to believe. But if you are a Christian and you are unable to believe, it therefore means you need to check your mind. What did you put in your mind and what is in your heart? You need to work on it. For if you don't work on it, then the, the, the power of the word of God will not be able to do it. So you need to allow the word of God to come into it if you have done a number of things. So we talk about plowing the, 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 the fallow ground. We are talking about make your heart become usable. Let your heart become a place that God can use. We take for granted that God can use anybody. I will tell you no. He has called to use everybody, but not everybody's heart is ready. We are called to be farmers. We are called to work in the farms. But if you are a called farmer and you don't work on the farm, you will not be productive. You will not have a harvest. Or you are just called to sow. You discover you will be sowing a mountains. And before the crops could shoot forth, you will discover that tons will destroy them. So if you don't work on your heart and make your heart usable, then prayers will be something very difficult for you because God will be unable to answer. The beginning and the end of your answer of uh, uh, your prayers coming to pass depends too on you. Who are you? What do you believe in? What are you working towards? If you don't know what you be believe in, I don't know what you are looking after. Therefore, you will not be able to plow the, 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 the fallow ground and allow it to be productive the way it is. Less you will sow in tons. And then, before the response of your prayer comes, the tons may have eaten all of them, and you end up saying, oh, God does not hear my prayer. Say, break up your fallow ground and sow not among tons. So, we are talking about trying to sow in a prepared land. We are talking about trying to sow in a prepared heart. Let your heart be prepared. What are the things that hinder your heart? What are the things that hinder your heart? What are those things that hinder your heart? I will give you at least four. We talk about hatred. We talk about bitterness. We talk about lust. We talk about greed. We talk about unforgiveness. There are a whole lot of things that causes your heart not to be fitter. And God wants us to walk towards him in pure conscience. So there are some things that when you do and your conscience is not pure, you will hardly have the results. Not because God has hindered you from coming to pass, but because the condition of your heart does not permit that the results of what you are praying for should come first. Because it is in your heart that you believe and it is in your heart that you receive. If there are blockages in your heart, if your heart has, uh, 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 has, has not gone through preparedness, if you have not sealed your heart, you have not, made your heart to be, to, to be, you have not cultivated your heart, therefore, there are things that you hardly have them. So God brings us a command and says, break up. The fallow ground belongs to you. It is a ground that is fertile, but it has not been broken up. It has not been plowed. He has not been worked upon. It takes hard work to work on your heart. So most of the time we just believe and say, no, if it is God, if it is God, then God will just do it. When I'm in control, no, 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 no. God is not a monarch. God wants you to be taken into consideration as far as the decision concerning your life is concerned. There are things that he has done for you and there are some things that you must do for yourself. One of the things that you must do for yourself is to have a prepared heart. When you go before the presence of God, is your heart prepared? Are you ready to receive? Are you ready that God should talk to you and break down your system? So that the word of God can be productive? 
I know many of us here just want us to come and give principles on how to be successful. Everybody wants to be successful. But not everyone wants to go through the pain. Everyone wants to be sharpened. But no one does not want, no one wants to endure the pain of the filing of your machet. Before the machet should be sharp, it must go through pain. It must be filed. The Bible says, as iron sharpened iron, so one man sharpened another. So it is iron that you will use in sharpening. So you must sharpen your mind. You must sharpen your spirit. You must prepare your heart to be a fatal ground for the word of God. If not, the word that you are throwing into, the things that you are sowing into, you are sowing among tongues, and tongues will destroy what you are working for. So it is not God's problem if you have not received answers to your problem. It is solely your problem. If not, it can be, you, can be, you can be partially involved because of the knowledge someone has impacted on you on how to, 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 to receive answers to you and they have given you wrong ideology. Your heart is that ground that needs to be prepared. It needs to be sharpened. You need to work hard on yourself. You need to take away every obstacle. Just like the ground, the fallow ground has obstacles. It could be storms. It could be stones. It could be the hardness of the soil that you need to tear and soften it in order that when you plant, it will do well. If you allow bitterness in your heart, if you allow hatred in your heart, if you, your heart becomes a playground of for unforgiveness, therefore you will have it difficult to receive answers to your prayers because you have not worked on your heart. Say, so break up your fallow ground. And so not among stones. Send your messages. The number is on the screen. Send your messages through WhatsApp. No more SMS. Send your testimonies. So you discover that part of the problem, most of the problem that you have for not receiving answers to your prayers, is not the man of God. It's not even God himself. It is you. You don't want to endure the pain of working hard as far as your mind is concerned, as far as your heart is concerned. All type of rubbish, you keep them in your heart. And once you do that, there is no way you can make progress in spiritual things. For anyone to, to, to succeed and make progress in spiritual things, the person must have a pure heart. The person must have a free mind. The person must be free from bitterness. God, bitterness is that thing that the devil used to ride on us. It's a serious weapon in the hands of the enemy. It is a serious weapon in the hand of Satan. Who is Satan? Satan simply means opposition. That thing that opposes you and you subdue to it. So Satan comes to sow in you bitterness so that it can nullify the power of the word of God in you. You see, it is with joy that we will draw our water from the wells of salvation. It didn't say it is with bitterness. It didn't say it is with hatred. It didn't say we will do it in lust. It didn't say we will do it in greed. It didn't say we will do it in unfeeling. It said it is with joy. So your heart must be a joyful place. If you can live a joyous life, then you are one step to the answer to your prayer. Because God wants his people to be joyful. God does not want his people to walk in hatred. He does not want his people to walk in lust, in greed, in unforgiveness. Hatred everywhere. That is not the calling. It is something that you must personally work on. So you who is watching, Part of your health situation is in the fact that your heart has not been plowed. Your heart has not been cultivated. You are walking in bitterness. And this bitterness has given you high blood. This bitterness has given you uh, 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 issues in your system. It has given you diseases. So, one of the things that causes us spiritual disease is bitterness, is anger, is unforgiveness. 
And these are the things that hinder our prayers from being heard. Because these things are not found on a fertile ground. The ground that you are treading on is full of thorns. It's full of wickedness. We have not dared away with our wickedness. We have not dealt with the wickedness that is found in our heart. So we say, break up your fallow ground. The fallow ground is yours. It is you to break it up. It is you to search those things that are obstacles for the word of God not to prevail in your life. It is not another person who is involved. It is you. There is no reason on earth why you should be annoyed. You have the choice to be happy and to be annoyed. You have the choice to make things anno- to, to, to be of annoyance to you. You have a whole lot of things to decide to see beauty in everything. So there are things that you must see and see the good side of it and be happy. He said, it is with joy that will draw our waters from the wells of salvation. So if you are a Christian and you are always full of bitterness, then something is wrong with you. It is either you don't know why you are a Christian, it is whether you have not been taught, or it is either you have allowed opposition power to ride on you. Bitterness is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. Anger is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. Lust is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. Greed is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. Unforgiveness is not a gift of the Holy Spirit. What you must receive and make your heart fatal is the joy of the Holy Ghost. You must continue as the Holy Ghost to come to your heart. Always be with you. Yes, as humans, things might get you annoyed. But let it know. The Bible says you should not let it go down to known. It is for your good. When you forgive me, it doesn't help me anyway. It helps you because it keeps your heart good. It makes your conscience to be pure before men and before God. And that is equal to you receiving answers to your prayer. Because unforgiveness is the obstacle. Bitterness is the obstacle to why you have not received answers to your prayer. Last week we talked about building your own faith. There is no way you will be your own faith and allow bitterness to reign over your life. So Christianity is not just for charlatans. Christianity is not just for those who don't know what to do. Christianity is not just because you can open the Bible and talk. Christianity is a lifestyle. It's to live the God kind of life. Imagine that God is annoyed with you. Will you survive? He has chosen to forgive your iniquities. He has chosen to forgive your sins. Through his son, Jesus Christ. I see where some people say, when something is you say, no, it is God that will judge. It is God that will judge. If you place me in the hands of God, you are putting me in a safe place because God is full of love. God is full of love. He will only pamper me. And your enemy is the love of God's life. So don't ever think that's your enemy. God hates your enemy, no. God loves everybody equally. But he says, as an individual, break up the fallow ground. Break up the fallow ground. Let me let us see what Hosea says. So that you may understand exactly what I'm trying to say here. It says, so to yourselves in righteousness. It is you to sow. And how do you sow it? You sow in righteousness. And what is righteousness? Righteousness is equality with God. Righteousness is God. Righteousness is Christ. The Bible says, For Christ has become unto us righteousness. So whatever thing that you are doing, you should be doing it in Christ. And whatever thing that you are doing in Christ, should be out of love. So you should sow in love. And he said, reap in mercy. As a child of God, there is no time to come before God boasting. We are daily living because of the mercy of God. You are alive today because of the mercy of God, not because of your right deeds. Your right deeds cannot save you. The Bible says the, the, uh, our own righteousness is a futile act. 
If you accumulate all of your goodness that you have done in this world, the Bible calls it a fitting rack because you are not saved by the good things that you have done. You are saved by the deeds of Christ. So he says, reap in mercy. So no matter how you have sown, you don't need to hit your chest and say, oh God, I thank you. You don't need to hit your chest and say, no, I have done it. Sorry. You need to say, God, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for allowing me to sow. And now it is time to reap. So I reap it in joy. I reap it in mercy. Thank you for your mercy. You sow in righteousness, you reap in mercy. And it says, break up the fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. So there is no way you can seek the Lord full of bitterness in you, full of anger in you, full of greed in you, full of unforgiveness in you. You must let all those things go so that you can seek the Lord properly. Why? Because God is about to rain righteousness upon you. The gift of righteousness is the reason why you will succeed. So after doing all what you have done, you allow your heart at the mercy of God, and then God will walk through it and bring to life all the things that he wants them to do for you. And if you don't have this mindset, that is the reason why you will pray for a month, you will pray for a year, and then you will tell yourself, God does not answer prayers. A man of God says, if you have not prayed for 10 years continually, then you don't believe that prayer works. You say you give. You have not yet given for at least 10 years continually, then you don't believe in giving. So whatever time you have done, you must have, you must have a long history of it. The issue is that we like comparison. We like competition. If God has done that to this person, why not me? Not everybody carries the same graces. Not everybody has the same destiny. Even some of the persons that you have seen them walking where you don't know how long they were, they were sowing in righteousness. You don't know how long is their work with God. So focus on your life with God and you will see the reign of righteousness over your life. You will see it. Work on yourself. If you want to be your own faith, if you want to have a good prayer life, then bitterness, anger, Unforgiveness, loss, greed must be dealt with. We tell someone and say, oh, 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 that's how I am, that's who I am. I'm always bitter, I'm always angry. I'm a greedy person, that's my nature. That's why God, gave. God did not give you that. Those are not gifts of the Holy Spirit. He said you should sow in righteousness, reap in mercy, for God is about to rain his mercy upon you. So they, they, they block, what is blocking you from succeeding is the fact that you are not been sowing in righteousness. You are not even ready to reap in mercy. So how will the kingdom of God shine upon you? How will it? We want God to answer our prayer, but we don't want to go through the pain. We don't want to spend sleepless nights. You don't want to give your position to others. You just want God to bless you and you alone. <laughs> you need to work hard. You need to work hard. And that's why many of us Christians, we are embittered. We are not making progress. We are not making progress. And they were accused uh, Christian, uh, Christianity as a, as a reason why Africa is not developing. I will tell you it is a lie. We have been sowing among the thorns. We have not sown in righteousness. Christianity does not stop you from walking. Even as a man of God, it doesn't stop you from walking, except God tells you to. So God says he will bless the works of your hands. So if you don't sow, how do you expect to reap? But we thank God for mercy. It says, sowing time and reaping time will not cease. Because your life is like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That will produce in and out of season. This is for those who have a cultivated heart. 
who have a plowed heart, those who have tilled the heart, those who have made their heart a fatal ground for the word of God. I'm sure we'll, we'll continue this next week. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to listen to your, 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 your to, to hear from you. So thank you. We'll be right back after the jingle for prayers. Touch that dial. Entertainment is never enough. 